Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabori here, and I decided to do something different. It's not a movie review, nor a special review, but it's indeed a review of the OVA series that came out on June 21st, 1993 in Japan, simply called Battle Angel, or Battle Angel Alita, whatever you like to choose, or, or hell, even Gunnam, or Gumbo. <laughs> Yep, which is based on the manga series by Yukido Kishiro. And after I saw the movie in theaters a few weeks ago, yeah, Lead of Battle Angel, which I had a wonderful time seeing it, an awesome time, that I would love to see it again and again and again, especially before I picked up the Blu-ray when it comes. <laughs> I guess I forgot to mention that I did actually see the two-episode OVA series before, but it had a different dub. Or maybe it was the same one, but anyway. Um, yeah, because I think um, my brother Jason rented this at um, Hollywood Video. It had to be Hollywood Video, yeah, because you know, I remember we sort of renting some anime at Hollywood Video and we started watching them. And we love them. <laughs> so. uh, but looking back at it now, um, it was fun, but I wish there were more. Since we only had two episodes called Rest the Angel and Tear Sign, all which is from the manga, they only had nine volumes uh, that Kashira had worked on, but the rest of the other volumes were never adapted. He also worked on the, f the 14 volume uh, Last Order series and all the rest of them. So that's why, you know. It was just too busy, you know, couldn't keep up with it. I guess they consider the OVA series more of a test and see how it looks. Because they also did some changes too, um, straight from the manga. So I think that's probably what we got right here. Uh, yes, um, there are several dubs in this um, OVA anime that we got. Uh, we have the UK version, we have the US version, and of course the Japanese version. I think there might be two Japanese versions, so I mean, it depends on the name changes they got. And by the way, uh, the characters' names have been changed, or slightly. Uh, in fact, Alita is actually Golly. I don't like the name, I know, Golly just sounds kind of weird. And there's also Yugo instead of Hugo. Yeah, I mean, Yugo sounds like the name of a car, or at this rate, the name directly from the country Yugoslavia, whatever you choose. But Hugo's a better name. Um, but some of the other names are remain the same, like, um, I see, I thought it was Ido at first, but it was actually Ido. That's how it's pronounced. But yeah, it's, it's Daisuke Ido. We also got Dr. Sharon, as well as Vector. We also have the villain Gugreshka, and all the rest of the other ones that we got. So, it is a story about um, a young girl built together by Ido. Suddenly she becomes a hunter warrior herself after she discovers. Um, a secret behind Ido that yes he's a hunter warrior and he was once um, he was once married to um, his ex-wife um, Dr. Sharon who now works with uh, Vector so that's where she started building all these other um, sideboards they're all villains and apparently they were all part of the uh, the game that they have so. She did met um, Hugo, or, or Hugo, and Hugo was the one who wanted to go straight to Solemn because he wants to live there, have a good life, because he didn't like the city that he lives in called Iron City, because he thought it was a dump, and, and the fact that you know, everyone's going to attack him, and, you know, he, he'll become a, a fugitive, but he just, just couldn't take it. But with all the money he collects just by scraping all the uh, the parts of 
of all the cyborgs around, he'll be able to collect enough money since he worked with Rector to go all the way to Solon. Now this is going to be a little tough uh, having to read the, the cast and crew of several versions here, but bear with me. I'm going to try. So let's start with the, the review with the AVV film dub. Stars Amanda Wynn, Laura Chapman, uh, Spike Spencer, uh, Gaul Lunday, um, Matt Greenfield, and Doug Smith. On the um, manga version from the UK, it stars um, Laura, uh, Larissa Murphy, uh, Stuart Mulligan, uh, Andy Ojula, Lorraine Rice, um, Tamsin Hollow, John Burrell, and Angel Fisher. In the Japanese version, it's uh, voiced by Miki Aito, Shizuki Kawaya, Kapel Yamaguchi, um, Mami Kayama, Shiguro Chiba, Koji Tana, and Takumi. Yamazaki. Okay. It's written by Yukido Kashiro, you know, based on the manga, and it's directed by Hiroshi Fukutomi. In episode one, called Rusty Angel, we meet a cyber physician named Daisuke Ido, not Ido, as I said in my movie review. Yeah, but that's okay. I mean, I do make mistakes with names, or maybe that's just the way they pronounce it somehow. Anyway, um, he scavenged around the entire dumps of Solemn in Iron City just for useful parts. That's until he had crossed the remains of a female cyborg who was still alive. So Ido decided to take her home and decided to restore her back to life in, by using a new cyborg body. And shortly afterwards, we now finally meet the cyborg, which Ido actually named her Golly, or at this rate, Alita. And you know what, I'm, I'm going to stick to Alita, because it's, it's so much better, it fits better. Um, same goes with the name of Hugo. It will definitely be Hugo instead. <laughs> so yes, Alita suddenly became interested in a local boy named Hugo. He was actually performing maintenance work for Ido. So afterwards, uh, Ido returns home late at night, and Alita had noticed that he actually had a wound on his arm. So yeah, he was very injured, which he explains um, to uh, Alita that it was a result of him falling that night. So after introducing herself to Hugo, he convinced her to go with him and decided to leave with each other just as Dr. Sharon had arrived. As we all know, Dr. Sharon is the ex-wife of Ido. You know, they, they once had a child which led to, to the secret behind. But now Dr. Sharon is working with Vector. Anyway. Hugo and Alita had to climb all the way on top of the roof of an abandoned factory. They both fell. Instantly, Alita had managed to catch him and they land safely. <laughs> yeah, because she was very strong too. So on the roof, um, Hugo discussed about that he wants to go all the way to Solom, which is the city all the way on top. Because down to the bottom is Iron City. So he's very interested in going there because he thought this would be a better place for him. He wanted to make more money. I mean, he also explains, you know, how his family went up there. But he wanted to make that interest. Um, so he had that obsession. But Alita actually makes her interest him very well known. So that's probably what happened. <laughs> 
Yeah, she started to stare at him. Very funny. Also, uh, Ido and Dr. Sharon decided to go for a drink. You know, Sharon was very obsessed with returning to Solom. You know, because that's what she started working on all these cyborgs that we have. But Ido's acceptance of his lot in life was a waste. He warns her not to get involved with the factory and says that he had no regrets about what happened over there. So later that night, um, Alita has been awakened by Ido. They decided to go out. Curiously enough, uh, they went straight um, to the alleyway, and that's where we found these criminals by the name of Russia and Gushka. So, this is where Ido suddenly uh, disguised himself as a hunter warrior. That's why he brought in his trusty mallet. Yes, uh, that is sharp. <laughs> and just to take take down those guys. But then Alita came to the rescue and decided to beat the shit out of it, all those criminals. Even does a drop kick down to um, <laughs> Ugushka's arm. So, um, but apparently she doesn't even know how she did it. I guess her body suddenly became more stronger than ever before. <laughs> because we did learn that she had no memory. I mean, she couldn't remember anything. It was all blank, but she basically knew all of a sudden. So now she signs herself as a hunter warrior herself, but, but even Ido refused to let that happen, but... She did it anyway. She ran away and decided to do it by going straight to the, uh, the facility to, to sign her up and try to find some information about who she really is. So, so now, as a hunter warrior, she works with Ido, and that's when they went to the bar called uh, Kansas, where it has all the other... Um, you know, hunter warriors that hang out. But that's when we started to meet Gugreshka once again. All we built, and Dr. Sharon suddenly joins in, and this is where we had the fight. A battle between Alita and Gugreshka. And yes, I'm also going to mention this, but yes, Gugreshka does kill a dog. That's when Alita suddenly takes the blood from the dog and puts her straight on, onto her cheeks, kind of like how, you know, football players love to do it, or, you know, just to, or any other, you know, war battles, just, just to make themselves look tough than ever. So they had a huge battle together, and Alita just took him down completely. Just when they were about to have sex and everything, yeah, they've been having sex. Uh, Vector actually tells uh, Sharon that he wanted Alita to be part of the bargain to involve in in a Colosseum gladiator, so that way she'll be able to fight. But, yeah, that didn't work out as it seems. So. Okay. Um, now I'm going to start with uh, episode 2 called Tear Sign. This is where Hugo and Tanji, you know, he was working together with his friend, uh, by going to the alley, just once again, collecting all the, the spinal columns straight from the cyborg victims around. But Vector appears and actually kills the cyborg to eliminate him as a witness and then admission Hugo for his carelessness. So, yes, this is where he started having a drink. He got intoxicated after. But, by, but in Hugo's place, um, uh, Alita had to wait for Hugo along with his neighbors, who were very skeptical about his plan to get to Zolom. Um, he was waiting for him to see if it shows up, and he did. But after turning down Vector's offer of a role in his business operations, which includes controlling other souls to send him to Zolom, the Vector, uh, Hugo, you know, already intoxicated, was dropped by by Vector, noticed uh, Lita, and in his apartment, um, Alita had to give uh, Hugo some water, trying to explain about, again, Zalem. But to help him out, uh, she embarks on a bounty spree, you know, going around 
you know, killing all these other cyborg criminals around. And earning a bag of credit chips. Yeah, because he's starting to collect a lot of money. Hoping this will really help uh, him get to it. Even so, uh, Hugo has been collecting a lot of dough. That he, and he decided to hit it inside uh, his place. So that way, you know, he'll be able to uh, save enough to go there. But that's where he got attacked by a bounty hunter named Sapon, which Tanji decided to attack him, and but he got killed. And then um, Hugo actually throws a fire bottle at him, got injured in frames, and decided to run away as fast as he can. So now he's he's getting um, an reward for his arrest. So they're about to go after him now. Um, he ran away, and while well, Vector, who's with Dr. Sharon at his office, gets a call from Hugo, reprising him about the situation, and tells Hugo to bring him his chips at his office. And after the call, the news broadcast revealed that Zagwiki, the resigned Coliseum champion, after Gugreshka's appearance, has lost again. A Vector actually tells Dr. Sharon that it's time to reveal Sir Wiki, but but she complains that the mood of all of her efforts seem to be fruitless. So that means when Brechter actually noticed the newspaper on Alita, recognizing her, Dutch Sharon also recognized her as well. That they decided they wanted to to have her join in for the Coliseum, so she'll be able to fight. But that's until Sharon decides trying her best to track her down. But outside the factory, uh, Ido was very surprised that Gali had collected 14 bounties in 7 days. Which, he then became a hunter warrior for the money. I mean, so that's how uh, Hugo and Alita had explained to each other how they feel when they're on, on their way home. But on the news report, yes, Hugo is being broadcast as a bounty, so now he's getting caught. They're about to go after him. But with Dr. Charon becoming a stakeout, suddenly follows Alita, which Alita is talking to, to Hugo. And this is where Hugo explains about why does he want to go there in the first place. And he does right away before he got killed by a hunter warrior named Gain, and this is where it led to a battle between Alita and Gain. So now, um, so with the help of Dr. Sharon, Alita decided to actually be able to save, um, trying to save Hugo since he just died. He got got killed. They yeah, they actually took off his head and his body and then tried to have Ido uh, restored him back with a new cyborg body because at least he has the brain and the heart and everything. So they both um, they worked together trying to s save his life. But then when um, Hugo had woken up uh, with a new body. This is when he heard, overheard that Solomon was a lie. And that's when he decided to escape. And, and just when, when Ido finally did a success by putting him together, operating him and everything, he actually escaped. He ran all the way on top to Zalem. Well, Alita was about to go after him and stop him, but then Ido decided to go after Vector and you know, gave him his money, and then he found out about where Dr. Sharon is, and this is where they had a big fight, a huge fight, and he actually got killed afterwards by another cyborg. So then Alita was about to go after Hugo, just when he was about to climb all the way up on top. 
to Solomon and this is where he starts to fall and fell apart as Alita hang on to him and he died vanished so the only thing that was left of him was his arm so I had to put inside a basket put him into a balloon and so I had to fly all the way up all the way to uh, Zalem. So it was only uh, Ido and Alita together. Very sad ending too. I really love the two episode OVA series. I wish there were more that followed and, and it should have had. But for a good start, I mean, it was amazing. Um, I love all the action scenes with Alita. You know, kicking ass you know, for all these cyborgs around. You know, earning some chips. But at least she admitted that she didn't do it for the money. I mean, she did it because, well, she figured, you know, she wants to become stronger and better than ever. And she's trying to help um, Hugo trying to get to Zalem before something bad happens. And it did. And Ido was... It was great having to see him play a, a double role here. Like, you know, at first he's a a cyber physician, you know, you know, fixing all the parts of all the cyborgs around, you know, operating them and everything. But then afterwards, he becomes a hunter warrior himself and starts to go after all these uh, cyborg criminals. But with Alita joining in, it it works almost like a team. <laughs> yeah. I would have loved to see this become a full length series. Well, I know it's not going to happen. But it's nice to know that we did have the manga, so if, if you read the manga, you'll be able to find out how the story goes. So, following all the adventures that happens, and then go through another series uh, that's the 14 volume um, Last Order series. So you get to see what happens next. And the other ones after. Uh, but it's cool. Um, so the episodes, uh, all well written, put together. Uh, I, I love the music uh, for the OVA series. They had actually had a lot of good songs here, like, like for example, um, uh, Rusty Angel, as well as. Uh, Belief in the Fate, or Cyborg Mermaid, <laughs> yeah, a lot, of, a lot of great songs here that they put in for the, for this. It's well animated, um, top notch, great characters all the way around, and I gotta say, uh, Yukito Kishiro really, really did a great job uh, with the manga as well as working for the OVA series by Hiroshi Fukutomi, so he did a good job too, providing. So, it, this was basically a test to see how it goes, but otherwise it would still be remembered. Now here's another difference here with the, the OVA, the manga, and yes, even the <laughs> the live-action adaptation was that because I know the live-action adaptation is PG-13 so this one on the other hand though as well as the OVA it, it contains uh, graphic violence has a lot of nudity well yes it does have a lot of nudity well the OVA just has um, some nude scenes with Dr. Sharon and you know you could definitely see her naked and um, there's even another scene where we get to see her boobs uh, when she was having sex with Vector. So yeah, th there's a lot of that, and but it has a lot of blood and you know, a lot of body limbs uh, falling apart and everything. There's even foul language uh, in several dubs around. So yeah, all put together. Um, as for the dubs themselves. Uh, what do I recommend? I would recommend the Japanese version. 
But if I had to go for certain dubs, though, I would say the it, the UK dub would be better because at least they say her name correctly. Yeah, Lita and Hugo and all these other characters. Although I, I didn't mind the English dub version from ADV Films, so I'm, I'm okay with it, but again, I think I like it better when they just changed it. I mean, of course, there was one scene when when uh, Hugo or Hugo was, was talking to Alita or Gally <laughs> about going to, uh, to Solemn. This is, there's a scene where she suddenly looks, you know, stares at, uh, at Hugo and starts to say, in, in the English dub version from the ADV films, he says, why are you looking at me so funny? <laughs> yeah. Well, in the, the UK dub, he actually says, laugh all you want. So I'm going to go there someday. <laughs> there you go. Uh, but I think the Japanese version just says the same as, as it is, although maybe there might be another one so, that uses a different dialogue, but you get the idea. So. The DVD is out of print, sadly, and the VHS tape is pretty rare. Um, I hope this gets a Blu-ray one of these days. I mean, maybe Funimation might take a chance to release Battle Angel on there if they have the rights to it. I hope they do. Because uh, it was actually created by uh, Madman Entertainment. And they actually work on it. And along with the other companies. So they put it together. I just hope this time we'll be able to have it with features and all this other stuff. Uh, I actually have uh, a copy, a DVD copy of the ADV Films uh, release. But I do wish um, there were more. But at least it had uh, the drawings in there, the design of the characters, all that stuff. That's all they have. It has a nice menu too for an old DVD. <laughs> but again, I really wish we had a new Blu-ray release. I mean, I, I couldn't believe they didn't do this when the live action movie came out. But let's see what happens. That's all I'm going to say about uh, the two episode OVA series of Battle Angel. Uh, it's awesome. Filled with a lot of action scenes and the story arc and everything that was going on. Um, I wish there were more. I would have loved to see what happened, but sadly, this is the only way we have to go. But. Hey, the live-action anime adaptation really made it up for it. <laughs> okay. So that's Battle Angel, the OVA series. And I'm definitely going to give it five stars. I'm Justin Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.